Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. And joining me on the program today is Anita Dula, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the NGMN Alliance. Hello, Anita, it's very good to see you again. First of all, congratulations on the NGMN Industry Conference and Exhibition and the Alliance's return to an in-person event. What were the key points that participants focused on during the Paris-based conference? Thank you very much, Guy, and thanks also to you and everyone else who contributed to the success of our industry conference and exhibition in 2022, this year um, in September in Paris. Um, we, so the conference by purpose, actually, we focused the conference um, around the three main focus topics we as the Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance focus on. Um, because we strongly believe that those topics are the three most important um, opportunities, but also challenges uh, for our industry today and in the future. So those are, first of all, mastering the route to disaggregation, including cloudification and um, network automation. The second one, uh, and with a focus on the end-to-end -end operating model of disaggregated networks, a very important um, topic and also one of our main focus areas in NGMN. Then the second big uh, pillar uh, is um, 6G as the next generation mobile networks alliance. Of course, we focus already on 6G and uh, we also had um, speakers from the entire value chain um, for 6G at the conference and um, then sustainability. Sustainability, green future networks, we call it, um, is, um, as we know, one of the biggest uh, topics now for the planet, for us as human beings and for the industry. And uh, also here we had representatives from the entire value chain um, at the conference, including startups. Well, Anita, let's look at those takeaways now in, in a little bit more detail. What would you say were the main takeaways from these discussions for the NGMN Alliance? Representing the Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance, of course, um, my main takeaway is that there is a lot of a, a, a big need in the industry and across industries to collaborate on those three topics. So we by purpose had um, operators uh, presenting uh, vendors research institutes, but also a representation from the vertical industry. And um, depending on the topic, of course, we are in different stages. So operators are in different stages when it comes to the road to disaggregation. There are different opinions still, and we will come to this, I guess, a bit later with regards to 6G, while we still need to deliver the uh, full potential of 5G in the industry. Uh, sustainability is a, is a huge topic, but all those topics, they build upon each other and they are actually interrelated. So 6G will build upon disaggregated networks, the learnings we make with 5G and with the route to disaggregation. Sustainability is a, a very important topic going ahead, so we will need to be much better with regards to uh, dual per, per bit. And um, all this will come together in 6G. And it is really important to foster exchange because um, we can learn from each other in the industry and together we can uh, achieve, uh, hopefully achieve the route also to sustainable uh, disaggregated networks going ahead to 6G. So how has your work been progressing in terms of network disaggregation, virtualization and cloudification? Are operators and other telecoms players increasingly embracing the approach? Yes, I mean, this aggregation for sure um, takes place in the industry. And at the industry, we also learned um, from brownfield situation, from greenfield situations. So we also had a presentation uh, by One and One and Rakuten Symphony together um, talking about a greenfield um, experience on their route to launching the network. And um, we have different um, operators representing different geo regions. So we had North America, um, Asia, Europe all together in the conference. And depending on the size of an operator, of course, uh, the, the situation is also uh, different. And um, what we learned is that actually um, this aggregation takes place. So um, we also 
had a very good um, um, presentation, for instance, about the testing of open uh, radio access networks, how the performance and stability can be uh, tested. Um, we had uh, some uh, presentations from operators who um, either already launched um, uh, parts of this aggregation or uh, doing trials uh, with regards to open RAN. Um, so it is happening and the learning is that performance and stability and latency targets can be achieved. However, we know that the, the route is still um, quite difficult and therefore it is absolutely important to focus also jointly on uh, different topics, uh, skills, so upskilling and also changing processes is very important. And this is what we are also focusing on in NGMN with the end-to-end -end operating model for disaggregated networks, where we um, in the next uh, weeks will uh, launch um, the next publication focusing on the network and processes impact. And going ahead, we will work on um, blueprints. So the, the ultimate target is to submit the industry uh, with different operating model blueprints or with the operating model blueprint, enabling operators and vendors together making their own choices. Um, also the ecosystem evol is evolving, um, the ecosystem is growing and um, one part is also the question what is needed to work with startups, how, uh, what is needed to work with um, new companies in the ecosystem, with smaller companies, how to foster innovation. This is um, also one of the core topics uh, which was discussed during the industry uh, conference. Yes, it's, it's all important work and, and disaggregation is one of the three key areas of focus for the NGMEN, as you have already explained. Another is 6G. How ready is the telco industry to seriously think and talk about 6G? And also, what are going to be the main benefits of this next generation network technology? Yeah, I think that's the one um, billion dollar question. And um, of course, um, there are many voices saying that we first should deliver on 5G and that it might be too early to speak about 6G. I personally believe, and we also as the Alliance believe that um, it is absolutely um, time now to speak about 6G. We started already end of 2020 to formulate the first um, vision and drivers and um, beginning of this year issued the first document on use cases and an analysis with regards to their differentiation uh, towards 5G and the first, the very first high level analysis with regards to technology enablers. Everyone knows that it is very early uh, stage. Um, use cases will evolve and um, we need to take the approach that of course we need to deliver according to the to the market demand. So there must be um, a market novelty associated with 6G. Um, it was never ever more important to deliver on societal requirements. So for instance on sustainable development um, requirements. And uh, last but not least, uh, operational necessities need to be considered going forward uh, with 6G. And also, my personal belief is that it will evolve um, in an iteration. So we need um, technology innovation and uh, technology innovation will enable use cases. But in the first sense, we need to deliver um, according to market demand. And what I felt is a very good approach, for instance, uh, which was presented by the Technical University of Dresden, um, who analyzed uh, the tactile audio and video uh, requirements with regards to human senses and latency requirements to come up uh, with, I think, what is a good framework with regards to what is really needed when we look at human um, uh, use cases, so use cases enhancing human communication. We will have also use cases enhancing machine communication, technology enablers, um, and like um, and enhanced energy efficiency. Um, but it is it is absolutely um, the time to speak about 6G. We need to collaborate um, if we want to achieve uh, an affordable uh, next generation uh, with um, seamless connectivity and. Um, 
ubiquitous, ubiquitous communication. So um, it will most likely also be a combination of networks. But all this is, as, as mentioned, early stage. We know that 3GPP standardization will start um, only in a few years from now. So in NGMN, we work together on demands and also on collecting demands and also on the end-to-end -end requirements already now. The next um, publication is planned for beginning of next year. But I think the most important topic is to bring the community, the value chain together on a global scale from the research institutes to vendors and operators all together discussing um, how uh, 6G would look like and what actually the benefits of 6G will be. Thank you, Anita. Which leads us to the NGMN's third main area of focus, Green Future Networks. Now, the second day of your industry conference was fully dedicated to this topic of sustainability. Why do you regard this as such an important issue? Um, it is it is an important issue in the industry, but not only in the industry. We know it's an important issue for the entire globe. So if we cannot tackle climate change early enough, um, we will have um, big problems as human beings and uh, as the planet as such. Actually, there was someone stating that it's less about the planet because the planet will survive, but it's about the human beings who might not survive if we don't manage to tackle climate change. Um, we are all aware that um, with massive machine communications, with an ever-increasing um, traffic, data traffic, um, also um, with the ambition to connect the unconnected, we will have um, much more traffic to cope with um, in the global telecommunication industry in the next um, 5 to 10, 15, 20 years. And for this, we need to become much better. So 5G was already much more efficient than the previous generations with regards to energy efficiency, but we need to become much better. And here we focus um, on network energy efficiency. And this was also, of course, a focus of uh, the conference. But not only, it is also about reducing carbon footprints. So how can we achieve um, a real circular economy with almost zero waste or zero waste ideally? Um, how can we reduce carbon footprint end to end in the entire service delivery chain starting from material depletions? And how can we kind of come up with uh, KPIs with fair um, and reasonable KPIs to measure the status of uh, green networks. And it's not only about our own industry, it is scope one, is scope two, scope three, but it, it is also about scope four, how the telecommunication industry actually enables other industries to reduce their carbon footprint. And also here we uh, continue, of course, our work. And with regards to the conference, I think it's also uh, worth to mention that we um, had a few startups um, from the sustainability area there. Interestingly enough, uh, most of them came from the area of wind energy uh, sources. Um, that was interesting. So, of course, there is uh, there are more areas where startups uh, should focus on and already do focus on. Um, but also here, it is important uh, to have in mind that we need to change processes, that it's also um, sometimes a big challenge for startups to work with big, big um, organizations, um, with the supply chain processes of big organizations. That's not specifically something what NGMN is tackling, because this is, of course, already uh, something which every operator and um, vendor needs to, be needs to decide um, upon their own discretion. Um, but it is an important topic for the industry in general. Uh, we need to foster innovation. And um, also in NGM, and uh, we invite uh, SMEs also to be part in NGM. And we do have SMEs working uh, with us in NGM and in the projects to also be heard and to early enough also understand the requirements from operators um, and vendors um, in, the, in the value chain. And finally, Anita, what did you learn from the event? What, what are the NGMEN's priorities that will take us through to the next industry conference and exhibition, which I, I believe is scheduled for 2024, when you once again gather together the industry? Yeah, I think what really um, did re-emphasize re the conference uh, was that the topics we are focusing on are the absolutely right topics. 
And we will continue working um, on the three main pillars. Of course, we still have also a few 5G projects up and running because uh, there is still a need to also support uh, the full potential of 5G. Nevertheless, our main three focus areas are uh, mastering the route to disaggregation. It includes also the route to cloud native um, network automation and um, with a main focus on the end-to-end -end operating model of disaggregated networks. So as mentioned here, I hope that when we gather the industry again um, together, probably beginning or um, at some point in 2024. So our conference and exhibition happens every two years normally. So I hope that we will already achieve, or that we, that we achieve the step forward with regards to operating model blueprints and also that we delivered value to, to the industry all together with regards to enabling operators and the entire value chain, making the right decisions um, with regards to operating models when it comes to disaggregated networks, but also with regards to the road to uh, cloud native um, net, uh, networks, which is part of disaggregation um, and um, network automation. The other big topic, sustainability here, um, we do have work items ongoing. So for instance, um, supply chain circular economy criteria, end-to-end -end services footprint reductions, network energy efficiency. We will need to look more closely on um, the network energy efficiency of disaggregated networks. That's, uh, that will be a very important topic going forward. Um, and then uh, last but not least, of course, that we um, are already uh, progressing with regards to the 6G use cases and 6G requirements when we are in 2024, because it will be shortly be before the standardization uh, starts, hopefully. And of course, um, in the next two years, the market will still deploy um, uh, 5G standalone solutions, 5.5 uh, um, uh, generation solutions, and we will learn from the deployments and that learning needs to go also into um, our new work items um, for 6G, but also for sustainability and disaggregated networks. Anita, congratulations to you and your team for a great event this year, and we look forward to the next one. And you can view all of our interviews from the NGMN Industry Conference and Exhibition 2022 right here on the Telecom TV website. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.